Topping our news this morning, an American beheaded by ISIS militants may not be the last. The group of Islamic extremists operating in Iraq and Syria want the U.S. to stop helping security forces. Craig Boswell has details on new threats to kill more Americans. The video of an Islamic militant beheading a man believed to be 40-year-old James Foley is too gruesome to show. Posted online Tuesday, ISIS called it a message to America in retaliation for U.S. airstrikes on the group's fighters in Iraq. Former Deputy CIA Director Mike Morrell says the U.S. should not be deterred. So we should mark this date down because this is ISIS's first terrorist attack against the United States. Foley was working as a photojournalist covering the civil war in Syria when he went missing in November 2012. Previously, he'd been detained working in Libya and talked about the experience on CBS. Well, we were uh, going out to report on what was actually happening on the front lines. Foley's family confirmed his death and called on his kidnappers to spare the lives of other hostages. Like Jim, they are innocents. They have no control over American government policy in Iraq, Syria, or anywhere in the world. The militant in the video speaks with a British accent. Morrell says many foreign fighters have gone to Syria and Iraq to join ISIS and could pose a long-term threat to the U.S. and its allies. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Washington. The family of the tanker truck driver killed in last week's crash in Williamson County is now talking about the tragedy. Bobby Bobo's family spoke exclusively with News Channel 5's Andrea Klein Thomas yesterday. They told us Bobo was a dedicated driver for Edwards Oil for 40 years and was looking forward to retiring soon to spend more time with his wife, kids, and grandkids. People are going to be late for work, but they'd always be forgiven, forgotten. But my dad didn't make it home. A memorial service is scheduled for tomorrow at Heritage Funeral Home in Columbia. Attorney General Eric Holder has just arrived in Ferguson, Missouri this morning. He'll be getting a first-hand update on the federal investigation into Michael Brown's death. A protest is planned outside the St. Louis County Prosecutor's Office today, just as a grand jury is expected to begin hearing evidence in the deadly police shooting of the unarmed black teenager. The killing of the 18-year-old by a white officer has triggered more than a week of violence in the mostly black city. Officers used pepper spray on some people in the crowd overnight and nearly 50 were arrested. And finally, they're calling it the trip of a lifetime. Carrie Martin Vance turned 50 years old back in April and wanted to mark the milestone in a very special way. She and her partner, Amanda Martin Vance, both of Kingston Springs, went on a tour of 50 states in 50 days, both on a Harley. We asked Carrie what the best part of the trip was. People, people are good people everywhere you go. People um, pulling out a paper map, people wanted to help and see where you were going. Seeing our tags from Tennessee, people wanted to know, did we ride all the way from Tennessee? They were, you know, people were amazing. And the entire trip was documented on Facebook and a GPS tracker website allowed followers to keep up with the entire journey and an unforgettable birthday for sure. I cannot imagine doing 50 states in 50 days.